doing is pay it forward. When we learn something that might help another person with Elders Danlos, because this is a very lonely, difficult journey, confusing journey, um, that's what we need to do is just try to share and maybe something that I'm going to share with you today might help you. Um, so uh, I would like to make sure you understand that this is information in this presentation. I'm not a medical person. I, um, my diagnosis or treatment, this is all my personal experience. Uh, I'm not trying to override any medical information at all, but just hoping that you might gain information from what I, I have had success with. Now, I don't want you to look at me at 72 and say, yeah, she doesn't have a clue <laughs> how bad it is for me. And I just want to say that it, it sometimes it almost feels like a competition when you, somebody calls up and they go on and on and all these lists of things. And I, I try not to focus on the page you're looking at, but I just want you to understand I've been there too. Um, I did four years in a wheelchair over here. You see my service dog, Maggie, that has since passed. I'm now over a year since I lost her and still haven't been matched. And I've been waiting for three years now. So it's heartbreaking. So when I bend over, my hip pops out from a damage done in the hospital, unfortunately being transferred. I've had two neck fusions that like the rest of you, you can see the bruising on my arm. Um, the picture up in the top right is the first time I actually got up and walked again after four years. I was coming out of a hospital in Wisconsin and stood up for the first time in that leg brace and uh, surgery that uh, turned my life around. And that's bottom right is just us advocating in DC, taking my grandson for a ride in my scooter and um, just various things to let you know that I, I understand this is complicated and a tough journey, but this is kind of after what's happened to my life with all the work I've done, advocating, um, you know, various things. This is my service dog over here. We were uh, advocating for cannabis in our state of Rhode Island, um, just as an option for people to consider. So we move on. So as you all know, there are 13 different subtypes of EDS with various levels of severity and impact. Some people are actually able to live a decent, a decent life with this um, and some people don't even realize they've had it. Many of us can go back in our, our family and see people that you are suspicious that, well, maybe they had it too, but they seem to do okay, you know, better than others. Others can cope with subluxations. Um, you have dislocations in some cases. Some patients also have involved with the spine and the spinal cord issues, such as tethered cord, instability in the neck and carry one malformation. Um, these three are very important issues to keep an eye on. If you're having problem with lower back pain, then talk to your doctor. If you're having problems with instability in your neck and it keeps shifting out of place, uh, it's, no one wants to go through surgery. But I'm telling you, getting my neck fused twice has given me my life back. I can think again, I can act again, I can talk again. Um, so, and, and I've been lucky. I did not get the carry one malformation, which is the drooping of the uh, tonsil in, the, in, in your brain. Um, if you have severe headaches, don't ignore them. You're not being a whiner complainer. You need to have those three things checked with a good neurosurgeon that understands EDS. There's a point in this horrible condition of ours, if you just go to a convenient neurologist near you, you might be making a mistake because if they don't really understand EDS, you might find that whatever they eventually do for you ends up having to be corrected by EDS neurology, neurologist specialists. So just keep that in mind. To, it's a pain in the butt. It costs money, but you're better off getting to a person who works with EDS. So topics we're going to cover. We're going to co cover the body care, the mind, and the spirit. Under body care, you can see the list that we're going to go through here. So body care. As I said, a neurosurgeon, three issues you need to make sure you keep an eye out for is the tethered cord. Things like uh, when I saw NIH sent me to Dr. Bolganes, who's in Long Island, um, and he started asking me these questions. Now, any, any testing I have by a regular person, I'll get a call saying everything's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. That same test sent to a neurosurgeon who understands EDS, all of a sudden I get a call, sit down, here's what we found that we need to correct. Um, so tethered cord, you might be having some strange sensations in your legs. You might be having problems with your bladder. 
uh, urine control. Um, and for me, the doctor said, well, anything else? And I said, well, this is nothing to do with it. I have pressure in my chest. I knew what he said. He actually it connected the pressure I was getting in my chest, in my sternum, to the tethic cord issue too. Um, carry one malformation, I can't really share because I didn't have not had that experience and my heart goes out to people that do have these horrible headaches. Don't ignore it. You're not being a complainer. There is probably something that needs to be corrected. And cranial uh, cervical instability, um, the head and the neck. If you start to find that your neck's getting weaker, you twist, you turn, you feel like the vertebrae is shifting, you're not nuts, they probably are. The safest thing to do, and we're gonna talk about that in, in a minute, is not get to regular physical therapy, but get to a manual physical therapist. You lay on that table, it is safe. I literally had two surgeries from regular physical therapy, people who were kind and meant well, but I ended up getting damaged, getting on machines that other people can handle. My body can't. I tore in an instant and spent the summer back then when I could do crutches, having both legs repaired from tears that happened. Um, so the kind of the main goal to tell yourself if strengthening is not improving these things above, then um, make sure you get to a, a neurosurgeon who understands EDS to evaluate what's going on for you. Inflammation is a huge thing, and I am shocked at how much controlling inflammation in my body has made and how I feel. Number one, we are food reactive. It's a pain in the butt, wonderful, good, healthy food. You're going to suddenly find out you're actually getting inflammation from. So a simple food sensitivity blood test can offer tremendous assistance in reducing the reactions and inflammation. Uh, I personally have had the MRT testing. It, they just draw blood, send it off to a lab. Um, but you need a knowledgeable dietitian to work with you on this. It is so worth it. And you'll find in some cases, if you eliminate that food for, let's say, three months, you might be able to go back and reintroduce it. In some cases, for me, things like soy, gluten, corn, all the nightshade vegetables, I cannot reintroduce. If I get those in my body by mistake, particularly when you go out to eat or you go to somebody's house and I've digested that, I, it it's, can be a week of havoc for my body. It gets inflamed and when inflammation causes the bones to sublux or even dislocate faster. Um, the other issue we all have is drug sensitivity. I, when I was born, the doctor said to my mother at, when I was a baby, that seems like she's allergic to her own body. Um, a simple DNA drug sensitivity test was finally done. And that doctor was just about right. I ended up finding out I can't metabolize any of the opiates, even aspirin, Tylenol, Benadryl, everything that had been put in my body through my life, I was reacting to, and it was real. And I got to the point that I was going to school teaching with nothing in my body to help with pain because every, it was a choice of having a reaction, living with that and this pain, pain medicine that was doing nothing or just living with the pain. But of course, living with pain and not addressing it ended up with horrible brain fog and eventually had to leave my career, which is when the doctor suggested turning to, uh, to cannabis, which I thought he was an idiot, laughed at him and ended up finding out that it actually was the one thing I can do. I take it at night in an oil and it's turned my life around. We'll get to that in a minute. Another thing that we're all prone to is candida. Um, that's a yeast in our system. That's a simple blood test can determine if you have a, a yeast infantation, uh, in, in infiltration uh, known as candida. Uh, oral medication can clear that out. But then you have to make sure that you understand it's the sugar and the carbs that are feeding candida in our body. And it gets, for some of us, that can happen very, very rapidly. So try, if you feel like you're gassy, you're bloated, you can't lose weight and you're almost starving yourself, then there's a good chance you might actually have a candida infection that you need to address, take care of it with medication, and then start to learn to reduce sugar and carbs. I actually, if I have any, any sugar, which I hardly ever do, it's almost within a half hour of foul gas. I mean, it's just instant that it's feeding yeast in the system. So be careful with that one. Manual physical therapy. Um, on the top right is the book that you can actually get off of Amazon. It was written by uh, my physical therapist in Rhode Island. 
Um, I've actually been to two practices in Rhode Island that are just a gold mine, uh, Healy Physical Therapy and Muldowney Physical Therapy. It was Kevin Muldowney that chose to um, go ahead and write a book to help all of you across the country and in the world actually of how to work on this. What he taught me was that you have to learn to strengthen very specific muscles to hold your, your joints together. Our ligaments and tendons are compromised because of EDS, they're not normal. So therefore the muscles are an overload doing the job of the ligament, the job of the tendon and its own job. So therefore they get overload, they go into spasm and it's those spasms that are then pulling the bones millimeters out of position called subluxations. For some cases it can go into a full dislocation. So this book, which is very wonderful to use, but it's best if you can find a manual physical therapist to work with you with this book. It's hard to do this all by yourself because you have to do this slowly and you should have somebody helping you with this. Um, it will be a commitment to daily workout. Every single day after I read the paper, I go back into that room and I do one of the three different um, sets of workout that I have to do. And you work your way up to a level five in this. Um, I can tell you at 72, I am better now than I was doing this protocol. It's helped to strengthen and hold me together. I actually cannot believe this. I just got back before from a 40 minute walk outside after living in a wheelchair for four years. It's remarkable to even tell you I could be doing this. So, you know, but there's always times you think you're moving forward and you get pushed back again. It's going to be a roller coaster. But through the guidance of this book and along with manual sacral physical therapists, you can learn how to successfully strengthen those muscles which have the additional task of holding your body together. So they are totally on overload. Physical activity is so important. I can't tell you how many times people reach out and I hear that they are bedridden. And I understand that. And sometimes you have no choice. You've been through surgery, you know, various things have happened. But sometimes because the pain is so horrible, you just choose to lay in bed. With Ehlers-Danlos, that's one of the most damaging things you can do. So you have to work really hard to try to find a way to get yourself moving. Um, when you live with chronic pain, you get emotionally and physically worn down. And sometimes it feels you just don't have that energy to exercise. So it makes us more important that we need to get this going. You need to keep your muscles strong and be sure to get the cardio workout to keep the body in the best shape as possible. Um, stationary bike, taking a walk if you're able, getting into the pool along with those um, Muldowney protocol exercises will help to keep you stronger. Um, I know the tendency is to sit and lull and you know, you feel like garbage and I get it, but that will be the most damaging. And it's shocking to me to get to the pool, have feeling like I'm having a rough day. And then I come out of it. And I thought, oh my God, I feel so much better. Not only does it make my body feel better, it makes my, my whole spirit, my whole thinking process feel better. So that's important to move. Kuzak protocol. I don't know if you're familiar with this, I ignored it for a year when I noticed another person using it. I am shocked how successful this is. It aims to regenerate connective tissue and resolve mast cell disease symptoms. It's a treatment strategy that's expected to continue in long-term, possibly indefinitely, rather than a cure for ehlers danlos uh, evidence. It's a protocol of various nutritional supplements that can improve the connective tissue integrity and some digestive symptoms in people with Ehlers-Danlos. I started this, I'm incredibly reactive, so I try to stay away from other stuff. So you take one item on the protocol, there's a list, um, you take it for about four days, make sure your body's not reacting, and then you add the next one and you keep going until you get, and you know, it's, it's actually amazing. I think it's made a huge difference in my life. It was developed by a woman and uh, who had Ellers Danlos herself, or has, she's still alive, has Ellers Danlos and two children. These girls were in high school, neck braces, wheelchair. They used to be rock climbing as a family. It was breaking her heart. She worked with doctors and scientists to say, what is it that's missing in an Ellers Danlos body? And worked together and came up with this protocol. Seriously, take a moment just write this word down, Google it and find that list and consider it. 
it, it really has turned a lot of people's lives around to be on the protocol. I have committed to this for the rest of my life because I know and I feel the difference of how I'm healing. Many of us have problems with, with blood control pressure. Um, many live with lower blood pressure than normal. And the few things I have found that have helped me, number one, drink plenty of water. I don't know if you can see this container. It's a ridiculously large, but I drink two glasses of water and then I drink this in the morning too. I have a whole one of these in the afternoon and another glass at night. I didn't know it looks ridiculous. You don't want to drink too much water, but for some reason, we definitely need to keep that water in, especially as you get older, drinking water is extremely important. Um, because I did have serious problems with passing out um, to the point that uh, one time I passed out in my husband's arms, had just returned from recuperating from leg surgeries. And literally as I was passing out and falling to the ground, heard both my legs snap and fractured both my legs. Um, fortunately, they were small fractures and I got past it. But um, the doctor now has me sleep. Literally, if you notice the picture of the bed, I sleep at a 30 degree angle. So it's lifted up under the head and straight down that way. So I sleep that way and also a pillow under my knees um, and a therapeutic a pillow that I'll talk about in a minute to hold myself in place because my shoulders will fall out while I sleep because when you relax, your muscles calm down and things can just slip. Um, I put a towel under each of my arms too to hold those arms from falling down and slipping out of place. Salt your food. It's, it's for most of us, salt is actually something we, it's hysterical. Most people my age were told to stay away from salt. Here I am on the opposite. I need salt. Um, it helps to keep your blood pressure up. Obviously, if you have high blood pressure, you wouldn't want to do that. Um, but get the real salt or uh, Himalayan salt. Get, get good salt if you're going to salt your food to help yourself out. Um, so that takes care of blood pressure. And don't get to the point of passing out and doing damage to yourself like I did. If you feel it's not working, then see the cardiologist. Consider what medication I am now on, Mitogen. Um, if I find I, I stick with my three doses a day, my blood pressure is safe. If I miss that pill, the, actually three little pills, if I miss it within a half hour, I know and can feel my blood pressure dropping. Um, and they recommend that we all should have an echo test yearly to keep an eye on the heart. Um, the problem for me now with that is if I have that test done, I have to literally get to manual therapy the next, that day, because any pressure on my sternum, I've had three massive accidents on this left side, horse crushing me, a man falling on top of me, horse kicking me all on this side. So my sternum, if somebody puts any little pressure on there, my sternum slips in. Every time I go to PT, my sternum has to be lifted back up. So just tell them to go lightly, but you know, have your heart kept an eye on. Quality sleep with pain control. You need to accept that you cannot continue to take this journey on your own when the pain gets intense. You need to address the pain in order to have an opportunity to attempt to regain some sense of normalcy in your life. You might be like many of us and have trouble metabolizing medications. So as I said, um, last thing in the world I ever would think I was doing in my life, but here I am co-director with my husband for cannabis apathy in the country because after laughing at that doctor, but yet going home desperate for pain relief and converting cannabis, I also have sarcoidosis in my chest, so smoking anything would be fatal. So I had to immediately convert it into an oil form, which was probably the biggest gift, gift I learned about because that taking an oil at night, it's private, I can travel with it. Uh, no one has to know, but I'm very open about talking about it. Um, and it activates why I'm sleeping. So when I wake up in the morning, if I don't take too much and I'm very careful about my dosing, I wake up in the morning, clear headed, ready to go. And now with all the corrective surgeries I've had, I don't take anything all day long for pain, which is shocking me at 72. That is because that, that cannabis at night activates, takes care of the pain and during the next day actually works on keeping the body calm. So it's shocking to me, and that's why I can't keep my mouth shut about it. It's, it's an option for you to consider using. And um, we're down to Nebraska and Idaho, the last two states that don't have any medical program yet. And 
every state needs some corrections and additions added to it, but we're getting there. Quality sleep with pain control. Many EDS respond beautifully to cannabis. It can be taken in a simple dose, as I said. Um, I've included the recipe here, and you're welcome to also get in touch with me at the end if this doesn't work for you. Um, but it's a simple process to take the product, grind it up, and convert it into an oil. And you just store it on the counter. You don't have to refrigerate it. You, you know, just keep it out of the sun, and it can last for a long time. Some of you are in a state where you can grow your own product. Some of you are not. You can go to become a patient under the, probably under, there's a couple of states that actually list EDS. I think it's Illinois and one other state. Um, most of us are in the program under the topic of being um, chronic pain. And that will, should get you into the program in your state. Orthopedic issues. If you develop issues with your bone subluxing and strengthening seems to not help, and there's talk about surgery. Just keep in mind that I had a doctor in Boston. We drove all the way up to Boston and he was, you know, had all his little interns following around. He said, oh yeah, she needs the surgery, but we're going to use her own ligaments. I thought, okay, walked out the door and said goodbye to that one. I said, how could he use mine? If mine are defective, what point would that be? So the doctor that I literally flew to Wisconsin and I wish he was still with us, but he's now retired. He used cadaver tendons. So the ones that were put into my body were strong, not mine that were defective. So just keep that in mind if you ever get to that point. Um, so uh, also consider arch supports. Many of us, if you look at your feet and stand and look down there, you don't see an arch in your, in your, in your foot. Um, that's very common with EDS. Um, okay. Um, we have a, a place right here in Rhode Island where they actually can make the art supports for you. It's best to get one tailored and made specifically for your body if you can find a good um, orthopedist in your state. And that helps tremendously. I have found, don't laugh at this, here I am 72 years old and all I basically wear now are sneakers that tied with my arch supports in there. That's what keeps me safe. So even if I get dressed off, up and used to go somewhere and do something, I still have those darn sneakers on. That's the life I live. And so be it, I'd rather feel safe. If I go into wearing shoes that elevate my heel or um, you know, any, anything that's different and doesn't fit right and doesn't tie, I find that my tibia and fibulas will easily subflex out. So it's worth it to me to look like an idiot just wearing sneakers, I, I go for it. Low dose, low dose naltroxin was um, given to me, ordered by my pain doctor. Um, I didn't know if it was gonna make any difference. And again, I waited a whole year and then started hearing people having some positive results about this. Uh, it's demonstrated to help reduce severity in conditions such as fibro, Crohn's, multiple sclerosis and so on. So I thought, well, it can operate as a novel anti-inflammatory agent in your nervous system. And um, I do feel it's helped me tremendously, not only with how I feel, the attitude, pain reduction, and functioning in general. So it's something I intend to continue to stay on. It would be ordered through a pain doctor. Simple things, safety tips for in a chair and in a car. It seems like a silly thing, but I used to drive an hour away at one point when my physical therapist was going on a vacation. He sent me out to Connecticut to see a different person who understood EDS. And I drove out there in tears. My sacrum was out of place. It was way before I addressed any of these issues. I'd get on the table. It was peaceful. It was calm. They put all these subluxations back to place. I get back in the car. And next thing I know, I was in tears again. I thought, what the heck's going on? It was my car. And I had no idea. It was how I was getting in and the type of car I had. So simple things to prevent an upslip. And an upslip is when your, your femur um, shifts up into your hip. And you're, you, you know sometimes you can tell you have it. If you lay on the bed, you bend your legs and you arch up and look at your legs. I, I, there's times one knee is up higher than the other. And that generally means you've, re, you've created an upslip. So you don't want to get those if you can help it. So uh, don't sit in a chair or a car and reach down, leaning to your side. If you need to pick something up, turn yourself to where that item is and then lean down. 
Don't lean off to the side. That can help to create an upslip. Um, shift your body to the direction to pick it up, lean forward, and then bend your knees. If you're standing, bend your knees to reach down to get it. Try to avoid twisting to the side to help keep your sac sacrum in position. And that's what was happening. I was twisting. And the last thing is the biggest reason I got into a car that I had to sink down into, as opposed to a car that I slide into the seat. So if you have to lift up a seat or go down into a seat and twist and turn to get in there, that right there is probably shifting your sacrum out of place and sitting on your butt with your sacrum out of place on a journey. I don't know about you, but there's times I was in tears doing that. And I've learned to avoid that through those simple things. Lifting objects. It's helpful to limit lifting and, and weight of objects to help prevent subluxations of your arms and your ribs. If you can possibly limit uh, lifting no more than five pounds, I remember being told that at the beginning, I thought, what are they nuts? How am I gonna do that? And thank goodness I was done raising my four kids because that never would have worked. Um, what happens if you lift, and particularly if you're reaching down and holding something or you have something on your shoulders, it actually can pull and stretch those ligaments and tendons that are already compromised. So you want to try to avoid that. Try using, for instance, the fanny pack. Who cares what you look like? Put it around your waist, snap it on, put the weight in that instead of on your shoulder, and you'll find that you'll be much more comfortable. Okay? Pillow. Um, with my neck fusions, finding the correct pillow was a lifeline for me. Um, many deal with issues with the neck. Therapeutical pillow keeps the head in position during sleep to prevent the subluxations that can occur just with innocent movement of sleeping. I used to sleep on my stomach and my side all over the place. Now I am a mummy when I get in bed. I get in my therapeutic pillow, put the towels under my arms, and the pillow under my knee at my 30 degrees. I mean, it's really romantic, but you know what? It keeps me safe. <laughs> I still wake up with upslips on my left side. That's just from damage at the hospital, but all of this will help you to be safer. Um, we're not the same as other people. We get loose um, with our condition. Mast cell, I am not, um, I, I, I'm just gonna put it up here because it's something to consider. Um, but I am not a person who's had a massive issue with this. So I don't, you know, I, I don't want to try to answer questions on something I'm not real familiar with, but it's defined as a cell filled with fossil granules found in the numbers in connective tissue and releasing histamine and other substances during inflammatory and allergic reactions. Many people with EDS have a mast cell issue. Those that suffer from these reactions struggle tremendously be sure to bring it up to your doctor if you feel you're not reacting normally to food and life around you. Let's say you've done the drug sensitivity and the food sensitivity and you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing and you're still feeling off, tell the doctor and get this checked out. Simple way to begin to address it from my um, manual therapy um, was a simple dose of Allegra and Pepsid I take every day to keep the very beginning signs away. And fortunately for me, that's been enough. I did go through a doctor in Pennsylvania, had more testing done, and it looks like for me, this is where I get to stop. And I'm very lucky because people dealing with mast cell, it's not a fun thing. So don't, don't pretend, you know, think it, you're being a whiner, you're not. Make sure you bring this up to your doctor and um, feel free to be in touch if you need um, people that deal specifically with mast cell. Let's go to the mind. The bottom line is getting this diagnosis is overwhelming. I can remember hearing what it finally was. And that was because my bladder had dropped a second time after a year after having bladder repair. They, the doctor said, I'm not touching you again. I'm sending you to this woman specialist. She sat and took notes after notes after notes and finally said, I think I know what's wrong with you. You have Ehlers-Danlos, but I want you to get genetic geneticist to confirm. And to be honest with you, I was so excited. I had notebooks and testing results. And I thought, oh my God, I can finally get better. So when you go on that computer and you start reading about Ellers Danlos, you've got to take time to grieve. Um, it's okay and you need to, to mourn the past life that you have because your life will be different now. Um, you have to learn how to live with Ellers Danlos and understand right now we don't have a cure. 
I started in the NIH research back in 2006. And at that time, it was one out of every 1,500 people with EDS diagnosed. I just got interviewed about two months ago, and now they have it down to one out of 500. So I think it's going to decrease even more than that. I think more people are walking around being told they have fibromyalgia, but yet their bones are subluxing out. They have horrible neck pain, you know, problems with their bladder, who knows what, and they're not getting the correct diagnosis and the help that they really need. That's why I speak out. We've got to pay it forward to each other. You've got to try not to get isolated, try to live with hope. I know it sounds silly and purpose and be proactive. And I know it's really hard when you're bed bound, you know, you're recuperating from another surgery and you know you have another one down the road and this and that, but try to think of things you can do in whatever circumstance you're in. And try to keep your mind as sharp as you can. Reading, writing, I mean, for me with my neck surgeries, I lost the ability to hold a book and read. I have tried every mechanism out there and I end up with neck pain that lasts for two weeks and my vertebrae start slipping. So I've just had to give that up to live a peaceful, calmer life. I can read a newspaper, I hold it way up high like this. I can work at the computer and write, thank God, but reading a novel is gone for me. But I need to be a happy person. There's still a life to live despite that. So you have to learn to, learn to accept more than that loss, but then find out what can you do. Um, you can advocate, you can write a letter to the editor, you can, you know, set up a group meeting at a library, you know, there's things you can do. I know it looks silly, but adult coloring got me through some of my surgeries in the hospital. Sudoku, I do every single morning, I get my end scrambled words, crossword puzzles, not for me, but for some of you, they're probably great. Um, I make up music on the piano behind me that I love to do. Um, puzzles could be an option. Sewing for me is out, but maybe you can still sew and I hope you can. Painting. And of course, now there's a new Wordle that my sister just taught me. So now we do Wordle every day too. But, you know, something to just to keep the mind sharp does matter. And the spirit. Try to mind, remind yourself each day of what you are grateful to still have. You're going to have losses. You've already had losses and it's it's really upsetting, but you are still here. And I keep reminding myself, this is the only life I get to live. Am I going to sit on that bed or in that chair and be miserable? Or am I gonna find a way to step forward and not let this be who I am? I have Ehlers Danlos, but that's not all who I am, if that makes any sense. Try really hard not to get isolated. I found, especially when you're recovering from surgeries, contacts in life do become limited and it's hurtful. It's hard. Uh, it's hard for other people to really understand um, that we still need friends. And I don't think it's that people don't care, but people have lives to live and we're, our lives are very different. Many of us experience our friendships diminishing due to either being judged that we look fine. I certainly have had that happen or just not being able to keep up with the activities with our friends or our family members. Look for new ways to stay connected and not feel isolated if you can. Locate a support group, uh, use an online support group or reach out to others that are also trying to learn to cope with chronic issues. Simple acts like visiting a rehab center, nursing home, reaching out to others also struggling can help put your life in better perspective. I'm always shocked, especially with our involvement with the US Pain Foundation, what so many people go through. And here, what am I grateful for? I still have a husband, despite his facing Parkinson's now, that still has put up with me and cared for me after all this year of, and 27 surgeries now. We've been through a lot together and he's still by my side. So I'm very grateful for that because I know, I don't know how people do this alone. So you don't want to be alone with this condition. So I found this and I thought it was kind of cool. My to-do list for today, count my blessings, practice kindness, let go of what I can't control, listen to my heart, be productive yet calm, and just breathe. So here, these were actually from my garden. Both of these, the sunflower, and this is obviously not this year, this is last year. Um, this is my email from the Pain Foundation. I, I 
never hesitate to respond back to people. If you, if you have questions that you want to ask privately, feel free to reach out at any time. And I promise you, I will, if you don't hear from me, check spam and trash because I'm not the person that's not going to respond. I promise you, I will. So do we have any questions that I can help you with? I do. Go ahead. Ellen, I don't, I don't know if you can see Julie's hand up. We don't I have do. any Go ahead, Julie. Okay. Am I, is it, yes, there we go. Here you. Um, nine years ago, right. Nine years ago, I had uh, surgery, the typical OA thumb base surgery and uh, the fusion of a finger. Unfortunately, I developed Ehlers-Danlos um, curvature and in nine years it has gone from just a little turnover and the bands and then it's, it's, it's kind of like belling down now. It's a 50%. Um, I am having surgery to try to correct that tomorrow. Oh, wow. Because, yeah, the, but I realize there's risk of, you know, with surgeries and so on and so forth. But however, that wasn't the first surgery I was supposed to have. Um, there was confusion because I had read about how a thumb fusion could actually reduce 40% of pain because I've had arthritis early 40s or even in the 30s, every joint. So um, what happened was the, the, I wasn't a candidate for a fusion on this because what Ehlers-Danlos has done is it shortened it and there's nothing to fuse together. Uh. So that's what I was told, but his, I don't know if I'm going to go forth with it down the future or not, but what he said, and my question is this, that what he would do is drill a hole drill a hole and then wrap my tendon around that to see if it would hold. Is that ludicrous based on, um, you, you said ligaments, right? Uh, you ca would ca cadaver tendon. Would he be willing to consider using a, a cadaver tendon? Because we didn't get that far because I didn't know any of this, but. Yeah, well, I, I would think I would ask. Okay. You know, I mean, make sure he understands that your ligaments and tendons are defected because of Ehlers Danlos, that you were yeah. born with this condition. And as you get older, they get looser and looser. So if he could consider, I, I don't know, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to ask him um, and see what he says. You know, I had a toe fuse because no matter what I did, it just kept dislocating. Just for me, once I get anything fused, anything below it goes next. So, you know, with my neck, I'm fused down to four. So now five, six, seven, you know, so you have to learn to live with those fusions. Same thing with my toe, my toe got fused. And now, you know, it, the, the toe next to it's now subluxing out. So it's just, like I said, it's a journey that's never over. Um, so you do the best you can to figure out how to learn and address. I mean, to me, the level of pain with that toe got so bad and I got to the point I couldn't walk with anymore that I took the chance, just like you're saying, I took the chance and went and had it done. And this doctor was unbelievable. I walk into the hospital that morning and I had all these people run over to me. Can you guys hear oh, her? Oh, you can't hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, no. I can. I can. Oh, you can. I yeah, can. I can it's like Amanda is saying, yes, she can hear you. Julie yeah. is nodding. Yes, she can hear you. I can't hear you. They can hear, so but maybe yeah. it's my problem. I'll work on it. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Keep okay. going, Ellen. Um, so what I was going to say is this doctor, you know, when you hit the right person, it's a gold mine. This doctor had taken my medical records and assigned everybody that was going to have anything to do for me for that silly surgery and made them all go home and study Ellers Danlos that night. They came in all excited to meet this woman with Ellers Danlos. And I literally went out of the hospital with a silly boot on. As soon as I got out, he had me switch to my shoe. He had taken an old sneaker, cut the toe out because he knew if I walked uneven with Ellers Danlos with a boot on and without a lift that I was going to sublux and dislocate and so on. So he respected that. So, you know, finding the right person who's willing to learn through you is important. You know, 
it's not always the case that, you know, we can, we can find it right in our, our back door. Sometimes, as I said, it means traveling, but traveling can be worth it to get to a person who knows how to keep you safe. Are you able to hear me yet, Julie? Yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, okay. All right. Anybody else have a question? I added mine to chat, but okay. Um, hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty new to the adventure of Ellers Danlos and haven't, you know, like gotten an official diagnosis. You know, I'm in the uh, rheumatology donut hole of nothingness right now. After at 46, I've had, I don't even know how many surgeries, total hip, total knee, ankle fusion, both elbows, both feet. And they're like, it's just, it's just arthritis. Oh no. But I'm hypermobile, but I'm not like my shoulders, you know, slip and even my hip and knee, even with the replacement, I can feel them kind of jiggling around and getting loose, even with the replacement. But I'm having a really hard time finding a specialist or either an ortho or a neuro or someone who's even really familiar with others damn list. When I find a few of them, like I've called a couple of people from either, you know, the Ellers Danlos Society, um, you know, speakers, they don't respond. So I'm having a really hard time finding someone. Okay, you're gonna do me a favor. You're gonna write down my email, okay? <laughs> you're gonna email me and remind that you need the list. We have, my husband and I, years ago, one of our four sons set up a website because people would get in touch and I'd have to copy paste this and that. He said, Ma, this is stupid. Let's set up a website. We have a website and on that list, when you click under Eller Stanlos, right towards the top, it's a list of doctors that are EDS friendly, okay? <laughs> now you're gonna learn, of, or you're gonna tell me and send me names of people you've already found that I can add to the list too. And it's just, you know, the other organizations also had it. You're welcome to use this list. If somebody's a disaster, and you've had a serious problem, let me know. I'll get the person off. But also remember that we're all different people and personalities. So you have to find the right match for you personally. But um, yeah, that's, that's the hard part is finding the right match. And it's really worth searching for a person who understands EDS, definitely. So feel free. Frustrating. In touch, okay. Yeah, it is frustrating. And also, having just moved back to the East Coast from Colorado, I also want to say that um, I truly have found that marijuana is an excellent adjunct um, pain medication. It's highly, it's, highly um, advocate for that. You know, what's so interesting with cannabis. I, I just assume, why would I want to be high all day long? Because I remembered my reaction in college and that's what I got. I ended up laying in bed all day long from like one puff on a, on a joint. And it's like, I hated it. I'm not a person that likes feeling out of control of my body. So I thought when, that's why I laughed at the doctor when he suggested it. But it's different when you have a body in pain. The body in pain, it addresses the pain. And that has totally turned my life around. And I'm so grateful for it. I, I, I'm shocked. I, and the other thing people say, well, if you start it, you're just going to have to keep increasing your dose. Well, that's funny because I started years ago in 2006. It took me four teaspoons of this oil to get to sleep at night and not wake up in pain all the time. Do you know today I only need a half a teaspoon? Well, all these corrective surgeries, all the things I've shared with you that I'm doing every day, I'm down to a half a teaspoon of oil to achieve the same thing. Sleep at night, wake up calm, take nothing all day long. I'm shocked and I'm old, I'm 72. So that's, <laughs> that's, that should, I hope be some hope for you that yeah, it's constant work, but you know, some of this work is worth it because it can help to turn your life back around. It's never gonna be perfect. You know, we have EDS, it's a pain in the butt. You know, you know, simple things like somebody coming up you haven't seen in ages, think about this. And they go, if they came and hugged me, it's instant, my sternum goes in, the sternum takes the trachea, the hyoid bones, they're always being shifted. And for me, my ribs pop right out, the, the spine subluxes, it's, it's a disaster to get hugged. And it takes me a couple of weeks for the body's inflammation from that hug to come back down. So our trick is my husband, when we're getting together with people we haven't seen in a while, is literally go in in front of me and say, remind them, please don't forget, don't hug her, let her approach you instead. 
So I create it and I have to keep my left, my left arm is the culprit. So I keep it up against me and just, you know, hug slightly <laughs> like that. Um, so it's just, you know, learning how to be a team and work with this thing. Cause it is, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else with a question? Amanda, where are you located? Uh, depending on where you're located, like we're in the DC area. Um, they have these, a lot of them have like support networks, like uh, Google groups. And a lot of times whoever administers those, they have um, like, um, like Ellen was saying, they have these lists of kind of EDS friendly doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not sure which geography you're in, depending on where you are. Upstate, that, upstate New York and near Syracuse, Rochester. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they have it in upstate, but you can, a lot of times you can like search for it. You can see they have like Facebook pages sometimes and social media pages. And um, some of the doctors on the list, because they're specialists, end up being like far away anyway. I mean, there's doctors on the list, right. on the East Coast list that are in like Texas and Cali and New York. So it's worth it. It's worth yeah. it to fly to find someone. That's right. Say, it, it's it, totally it, worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Take the trip. Say, you know, and, or, you know, Dr. Bogan is in New York and Long Island. Most, many of his surgeries, probably more than normal surgeries are repairing the damage that was done by somebody else who didn't understand the condition. And it's just very sad. So it's, it's time consuming. It costs money. It's a pain in the butt to travel and leave home, but you're going to be safer in the end with the results than just going. And I've seen people do it all the time. I have a friend that wasn't diagnosed for Ehlers Danlos for a very long time, went up to Boston because it was convenient, had her entire spine fused. And now it's, it's has snapped. She's now moving up and she lives in Wisconsin near her family now. And all this was done by some random person who did not have a clue about Ehlers Danlos and it breaks my heart. She's in serious trouble now. So it's really in the long run, really worth it to look at Seth's list, you know, my list, anybody's list of people that are familiar with EDS, it's really helps, you know? And, and like I said, if you guys have names to add, please let me know, <laughs> I'll add them on. Are there it, is any other a, questions? it is a kind of research project for, for your life. Um, in the sense that, you know, finding the right providers and getting opinions from other people, but you'll also find that the community, people like Ellen and, and really have taken all of their energy in putting together information and resources to share with other people so that they can get diagnosed faster or get the right help faster. And, you know, I know you, you feel really alone and isolated when you struggle with this, but you're not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say you're not. And, um, and I'm not, and, you know, I, I re am recovering from cranial cervical instability and Chiari, um, neurosurgery from occiput to c3 now i'm going to see a neurosurgist for the you know the joints down below i mean it's just what happens but i've taken my my energy and tried to put together information to help other people and that you know paying it forward like ellen is doing is exactly what we can do and just know you're you're not alone and it, it is hard work um but you you have other other people here with you you know, that, that reminds me, one of the ways I got my guts back up to live this life and try to put a smile back on my face, which gets misinterpreted. People, when they see a smile on you and you're not in a brace or in the wheelchair anymore, boy, you must be just great and everything's fine. But I think the biggest focus for me was my four sons and realizing they have 50% chance of having EDS. You know, their symptoms might show up in their 40s or maybe they've already started to show. Um, but I needed to set an example for them that you can take something that stinks and you can still go back and live your life. Because as I said, this is the only one you get. So uh, at least as far as I know, <laughs> maybe I'm going to come back and have another one. Who knows? Um, but, you know, you want you, being an example for my children really kind of mattered and gave me some strength of trying to figure out how to do this, too. Anyway. Hey, Alan, you, you talked about a lot of different. But first off, thanks for your doing this it's um, probably takes a lot of energy out of you and you, you talked about a lot of different things i'm yes a lot, i think a lot of them I, i'm familiar with or other folks have talked about but i guess you seem like you're a pretty motivated person i'm just wondering like as you look at that presentation that you put together in in it's 
like which of those aspects do you think has been most positively impactful in other words i'm kind of just wondering like okay if you knowing what you know now and you had to do it all over again where would you start like which which aspect would you start with i might i'm calling in on behalf of my wife my wife has hypermobile eds and um she's very good as far as like trying new medicines or um you know if she has to you know get injections or something like that but i think where she really struggles is kind of like motivating to do some of the more physical things right. Um, which potentially could be the most helpful maybe, but I'm just curious from your perspective, like which, which of the things that you've done has been the most, like if you had to choose one as the most impactful. Just one? Um, Two. (laughs) I would say, I would say beginning with dealing with number one, paying attention to, if you have any of the symptoms of carry, um, neck instability and tethered cord, because you can beat your head against the wall, think you're doing everything right to try to help yourself and you're not getting better. I would really make sure if you have symptoms for any of those three that you get yourself connected to an EDS neurologist specialist for that. Um, But the other thing that I think what made a huge impact in my life was addressing food and drug sensitivities. Um, When you have a DNA drug sensitivity test, it's a simple process. They send the kit to your house. You just swab the inside of your cheek, mail it back. They have a map of your body for the rest of your life. So I no longer am putting anything into my mouth my body cannot metabolize because I was sick constantly just from reacting to medications that was supposed to help and didn't. Same thing with food. Simple blood tests is sometimes a disgusting result you get back this wonderful food and I love to cook but all of a sudden you know stuff in my garden I wasn't eating without getting sick so that really really helped me to get some control back and I think I think anything you can feel some control of in this condition really helps you emotionally because if you don't feel like you have any control at all it's hard to hold on to hope it's a very discouraging condition. You, you, you know, you no sooner think you're on top of things and something else happens. And it's just the way, like yesterday, you can't see it, but I came out of PT, my, my little finger started to hurt, I looked down and it was black and blue and hemorrhaging inside. I don't know why, EDS is weird, but it didn't hurt. So I just decided not to think about it. But Seth, it's really hard. Um, all these things really have helped to turn my life around. I think the worst thing you can do is do nothing, not address these issues and just say, well, I have EDS, it's the way it is. I think you need to find a way to fight. And, um, you know, we have found it very helpful emotionally to talk to people and realize before the pandemic hit and we were out in society, I would say one or once or twice a week, we were running into somebody who knew we worked for the pain foundation and they'd start describing what was wrong with them. We're thinking, and they didn't know what it was. And all of a sudden we're saying, um, has anybody ever suggested, you'd say, gee, do you have really low back pain? Is your neck hurting? And I'm getting all these yeses. And, you know, I can't tell you how many people have EDS and are walking around instantly. So that in itself helps you to learn that you're trying to help somebody else to at least even get identified to begin this crazy journey because you end up feeling like, you know, there's something wrong with me that I'm got all these weird symptoms and I'm trying to live a good life. And why am I still out of whack? You know, Um, Seth, I'm all over the board on this. Sorry. (laughs) No, no, no. That's, that's helpful. Um, Cause it's like you said, there's so much going on with your body that it's hard to know like which ones to prioritize and and it's hard to get motivated Um, well the most important thing you're doing seth is you're there for your wife i can't tell you how much that means to have a partner that matters and cares about you and loves you and is there by your side and the fact that you're there with her on this is going to help her journey because it's a rough journey and the fact that you're not throwing her away and it's inconvenient to your life you have no idea what that does to this to the other person dealing with this so my hats off to you and my husband and all the other um partners out there that are not throwing us away you know i I, thank you for doing that for your wife seriously we're trying yeah it's hard it's hard (laughs) yeah anyway Anybody else? We good? I, I did have another question. I was just worried. A, a lot of you mentioned, not just you, Alan, but other folks on this mentioned a lot of surgeries you've gone through. One thing that she's contemplating right now is um, uh, removal of the tailbone. 
Um, I'm just curious if anybody was familiar with anything related to that. Why? Um, it, it, she has chronic pain in that region. That's and called, have they identified it as tethered cord? Well, um, it's on the list to understand better. They have identified a Tarloff cyst. So we're trying to determine, one of the things we're trying to determine right now is, okay, is this, is the pain coming from the Tarloff cyst? Well, but she also has basically like a 90 degree, like right angle tailbone, probably from a fall injury that she sustained when she was younger. But then she also has some symptoms of tethered cord as well. So I think we're, 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 I, I think the problem is she's one of the imaging that she got um, was probably not done or reviewed maybe by someone who really understands it, or maybe it could be a cult, uh, a cult to other core where it's not showing up or something like that. And, and um, that's the problem, so, Seth. If, they, if you don't get the right neurologist looking at this, they're going to tell you it's fine. You need to yeah. get to an EDS specialist. What, what state are you in? So the local guy around here is um, Dr. Fraser Henderson out of okay. Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, we're in the DC metro area. Um, he has kind of like mixed reviews or whatever, but he would probably be the guy to, to see. So okay. there's could also be one of three. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say there's also Dr. Bolganese, uh in Long Island. I would, I would get those scans to one of those doctors and have them read it and then tell you what they think you, she should do before you go remove a tailbone because it sounds, that's a very typical symptom of lower back and the tethered cord. That's the base of the spine and it's very painful. I used to not be able to sit in the car without crying like an idiot. Um, it's very painful and that's very common for EDS. So before you jump to that other option, I, I would have one of those doctors read it if you haven't. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we, we wanna try to avoid well, we don't want to make things worse and try to avoid it if it can be avoided. Um, do, how do you spell Boganese? Uh, I can uh, just Google it. It's fine. I'll tell you know. what. Take my. Can you get down my um, my email and email me, and I'll send you his contact. Or actually, I can look. I can look it up on my phone. Wait one second. Don't it's go okay. Away. I can just Google it. I'm sure there's not a lot of neurosurgeons named Boganese. I'm not worried about finding his, that. His first name is Paola. It's B O L O G N E S E. Okay. okay. Seth, I'm uh, sure this is Christy. I'm sure you've heard the same thing from other people. I'm in the DC area and, and um, I got help from uh, Dr. Sunil Patel at MUSC, who's, of course, in South Carolina, but like he knows what he's doing and they're actually building like an EDS Institute down there. That's going to be, you know, eventually in five years, the Ronald McDonald house of EDS. Oh, wow. And so he and uh, Dr. Norris that does the, um, the scientific research. So, um, that's another person. I'm sorry. Check in. You, I'm sorry. You're the, my phone cut out while you were talking. I heard you mention Sunil Patel. He's the guy down in South Carolina, right? But that's yeah, where I lost he's at, yeah. he's at MUSC. Yeah, okay. the other well, the other can't... place you, you might want to get some information from is the um, Bobby Jones CSF Foundation. That's the I think it's like Kiari Shringham. I, I can't ever say that word. Yeah, now I know what you're talking about. I was gonna say that those people um, have a lot of resources um, for things re relative to like the tethered cord and um, stuff. But yeah, Sunil Patel. Um, helped me and also the eds society the yeah. international society has all sorts of listings too and people you can reach out um hey guys i'm really sorry but i gotta get going okay thank you so much ellen thank you everybody oh, for joining pleasure. i'm gonna um put the replay out on my um, website which is holdingitalltogether.com could you send me the link to that because i have a i will report. would you just I okay will. and I seth will. good luck with your wife I hope things. Oh yeah, good. Good luck to all of you. Obviously, yeah. uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Alan. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Hey, hey, Christy. Yeah. Um, I know Ellen has to sign up. I just do you have like another minute? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Um, so you mentioned did did you have like um this? Well, I don't know if you want to talk about this 